Hello, you wonderful people. I am going to show you how to make a simple mask with a sewing machine. For a medium to large size mask, you're gonna need a piece of paper or cardboard with the measurements of 24 centimeters wide by 19 centimeters long. Before we get into this, I want to show you if you have material with a pattern on it, you do not want to cut it the incorrect way because then if you make the mask, um, it will show up sideways. And this is just an example of a piece of material I was working with, wasn't paying too much attention to, and I cut it the wrong direction. And now um, I'm going to, I'm still going to use it, but I just didn't want to use it in this instance. This instance, I wanted to show you about incorrectly cutting the material. This is an example of how I place my paper on my material to gauge where I want to begin cutting and then I take my scissors and I begin to cut. It doesn't have to be perfect but you want to gauge around the size um, that you want it so that you can continue to cut in the opposite direction. So in this example you can see it basically came up to a line in this case I'm fortunate because I have a line to guide me okay so for this instance you see um, using the base for the paper I was able to get a good um, size which it doesn't matter anyway because once you start sewing those lines will be hidden anyway as you can see here there are frayed pieces I tend to just cut those off because while I'm sewing, I don't want them to get in my way. Just make sure that when you cut your material, this will be the front part of your mask. So the front part of your mask needs to look the way you want it to be when it's on the front part of your face. Next, you'll need to cut a piece of material. It could be the same or it can be opposite. In this instance, I found a piece of material that would feel comfortable on the opposite side of the mask that's going to touch my face. The measurements for the back piece would need to be 18 centimeters wide by 13 centimeters long. And you will need to cut two pieces of material with this uh, measurement. Here's an example of how I measured the smaller pieces that will go on the back of the mask. I have a cutting board and I also have a ruler to show you an example. It will be 18 centimeters wide by 13 centimeters long. In this example, I am showing you how I place the piece of paper or the piece of cardboard on the material to gauge where I want to begin cutting. So um, I, this one I don't have a um, pattern on so it kind of doesn't matter the way that I cut it. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have a pattern on it you really don't have to worry about how you're going to cut it. So as you can see, I cut my two pieces that will be on the opposite side of my mask and I go from here to beginning to iron where I am going to start sewing. Prior to um, ironing, I usually fold and crease with my nail. I can't show you in this example because I have to hold um, the phone but I crease it and then I kind of um, move my nail to make it approximately about a centimeter and a half, two centimeters, to, so that I'm not using as much material. After that, I begin to iron the piece um, so that once I start sewing, it doesn't move um, and I don't have to, my, um, my stitch isn't crooked or as crooked because sometimes it does get crooked depending on how thick the material is. 
okay so as you can see i don't leave it on there long i just make sure it's enough of a crease only because with some material it'll stick to the iron i do this for both pieces the front of the mask we don't have to worry about as of yet just showing you how i do this with both of the pieces that will go on the opposite side of the mask okay so for this part you want to make sure that the front of the mask will face the same way as the piece that's going to be on the back of the mask so um, as you can see here i've already aligned it i've aligned it with the bottom and on the sides um, so the front part of the mask and the back part of the mask will face each other some material don't have this portion um, like I said before I only like this because of how it feels up against my face um, so when I'm at the material store I go to Joanne Crafts most of the time but um, well Joanne Fabrics I feel my material to see how I think it would feel on my body okay as you can tell I'm not securing this with any um, needles or uh, clips only because the type this type of material it it um when it touches this material it doesn't move so then i lower my foot oops <laughs> so then that's a blender so then i lower my foot of my sewing machine i know that was weird to where i want the stitch to be and i but for this i can't hold the phone and show you at the same time but um, let me lift it up again and let me align it for you because when i do this i want my um stitch to be as close to the bottom as possible um so as you can see i don't know if you can get in there you can see now i've aligned my needle i'll lower my Okay, so for my stitch, um, I don't start all the way at the end. I only secure here to, only because I don't like the bulk when I'm trying to sew. It makes it more bulky. And um, at one, one time or another, I broke a needle doing something like this. So um, I don't do that anymore when it comes to certain types of things that I'm sewing. So I secure enough away from and backstitch enough away from that end and then begin to sew forward. I do this with both pieces, both pieces facing the front of the mask for the and I line at the top and at the bottom. Okay, this is my second piece and I will lower my boot and I will begin to sew. Can't see my foot. <laughs> Back stitch. When I think I have it where I want it to be, I guide with my hand. Back stitch. Raise the boot. Take it. <laughs> because I can't. Oh, I gotta bring the needle up. There we go. And then after this, I will cut the frayed pieces off. Let's see. Okay, there we go. It so sometimes that'll happen. You'll get uh you'll get the the your thread caught I just cut it try to fix it on my own figure out what pieces are doing what there we go move it make sure it's realigned it's hard doing this with one hand <laughs> All right. 
realign my thread. So it's back realigned. Sometimes it'll get stuck under there. I just use my scissors or something small to move the pieces back. Okay, so now that you have secured your two pieces, um, you're looking to see if it's correct. So at this point, I just iron on one side. Um, so I try to straighten the lines too because I know I want it to look pretty decent on the front. All right, I iron, I begin to iron to straighten this out and I do the same with the top piece. It's a little dark, but um, just trying to give you an example, iron top piece. I then flip it over to iron the back piece. If I have lines on the pattern to guide me before I start ironing the back piece, I usually adjust the material there at the line to help guide me so it can look neat on the front piece. Oh, I got frayed strings I have to cut. So as you can see, this is where I begin to iron. I've already taken my nail to crease the material some. And you see I've lined it up so that it could look neat. I don't leave this on there for that long. I just iron for the neatness here. And as you can see at the other end again the front part of the mask iron so that the crease can be neat on the front iron top and bottom showing you how I iron the top this is how it looks when I flip it over to iron as you can see I make sure that the bottom is as neat as possible so that when I do begin to um, sew my sides, um, not as much bulk. Back side, iron, try, if you have a material that has lines, try to get it as neat as possible so that when it's on the front of your face, it will look neat. As you see here, I start on the side, I iron that piece a little bit I flip it, make sure the lines are straight, and then I continue to iron. This is how it will look once you've ironed your both sides uh, of the back of the mask with the material. After you've ironed, you should have something that looks like this. For this point, I take about an inch and I fold down and I do this three times I folded it three times down about an inch apart each I will take it over to the iron and I will iron this down so that when I begin to sew it won't move around as much here we go with the first pleat about an inch down, second pleat about an inch down, third pleat about an inch down. Now if you want a smaller mask, you can add one more pleat. Okay, so at this point I'm showing you how I'm by my iron. Um, Yeah, I have two different irons. <laughs> so don't mind this. Usually I just take my table setting off when I'm doing anything on the table in the kitchen because that's my sewing area. <laughs> okay, so I've already started it so that it won't move while I'm showing you. So I iron, iron, iron so that when it pleats, so that when I sew, the pleats stay intact. Now, um, some people use clips at this point. I don't prefer to use clips only because... Um, or pins <laughs> I've messed up pins I've melted them before so um, I just try to be as exact as possible when I'm doing it this way it, and it takes a little time but it, you know I don't mind that so um, I'm taking some time I'm ironing this maybe for about a minute and then I will take it back to the to the sewing machine and show you where I go from here okay so this is the back of the mask um, 
as you can see, I ironed and it's sticking together um, with the pleats. Some people iron the back, I don't. Um, I just iron the front to get enough of a pleat so that when I start to sew, um, that, well you could, I guess you could to get more instead of having more bulkiness, but I know just by gauging it and filling it that I've ironed enough. So um, usually I don't iron on the back, but you know, as you can tell, it's basically down and it's not as bulky. Okay, so at this point, you see that um, with some of the stitch and some of the way that I've aligned my material, it wasn't perfect. So I could have opted to cut some of the material off for the edge um, for less bulk or I can continue to stitch first and then cut um, the material off or just leave it but do know um, it, if you do leave it um, you create more bulk when it comes to the time of inserting your elastic into the sides so as you can see I'm here my line um, is here I, I will re, um, cut the remainder off it will be hidden anyway but um, so you see where my line is my line is here okay so I've already lowered my boot and I will begin to stitch okay I finished sewing this is how it looks on this side this is how it looks on that side I will cut some of this off oh side note when I'm cutting smaller pieces I use my smaller scissors opposed to my bigger scissors okay so I want to show you another one of my errors so this is one of the important things about lining up your back pieces correctly because if you don't you'll have um, like this um, let me pull my boot up so you'll have, as you can see here, I have to start here and come down. So it, it'll make my stitch a little crooked. Okay, just a side note, I don't know, most people who sew may do the same thing. So usually when I have uh, little pieces that I cut off, I keep a little garbage bag next to me. So I'll put, sometimes I will put my, um, my, shredded pieces in but for this one I keep because I usually do something with my um, scrap pieces so I keep a little bag next to me so I can throw my string into um, as a little garbage also use it for the pieces if I cut some material off of um, like I did in this instance if I cut some material off um, I use it to throw those little smaller pieces in because I can't use those. But this will be hidden anyway, and I'll show you in the next step. Okay, so once you have both sides sewn down, your next step will be to start to fold. Now here you see that I fold one side, and this side, it's an option. You don't have to do it. You can um, iron to make it less bulky or you can flip it one more time and begin to sew so as you can see just because I want less bulk when I am going to put my elastic through I go ahead and I iron that down to come to uh, make less bulk then I flip it one more time fold it not flip it fold it over one more time and I iron it again after you iron um, you'll have something that looks like this oh side note something I wanted to show you is usually when I fold I, the first fold I take it up to where I sew okay so just giving you a closer look you see that I've ironed this first pleat this first piece and you can see I take it up to where I sewed. Second piece where I folded it, I usually try to iron where the stitch is. That's the second fold. 
So at this point, you can um, choose to secure it with a pin. Um, as you can see in this instance, I've secured it with my pins um, so that when I start to sew, I'm gonna straighten this out. Let's see. Okay. Hard to hold the phone. <laughs> um, so that when I begin to sew, um, um, I place the boot as close. Uh, I place the needle where the boot, where, where your needle is going to begin to sew. I place it as close to this edge as I possibly can because when I um, send my elastic through, it's easier. Okay, so once you have sewn along your edge, um, as you can tell, I've um, batch stitched here and I back stitched here. Um, I once I've done that and I've sewn. I remove my pins. You'll have something that looks like this and then this. So um, as you can tell, my stitch isn't as quite the way I want it to be, but I mean, it is what it is. It'll be on the side of my face anyway. Just remember to try to keep, when, when you're sewing this part, you want to try to keep that um, your your line as close to the edge as possible without um, going into the um, other part of the mask. You want to stay on your uh, creased part. Okay, so as you can see, both sides should be sewn and look something similar to this. Now, this is the tricky part. For the elastic, as you can see, it's right in between my cutting board and my ruler. So I have, I've adjusted this to my face size from um, the edge of the mask to my ear. So it's about nine um, inches long. Um, again, you have to adjust it to your own face or what you think is about the size for the mask, your, um, about the size your, of the face the, of the person you're making a mask for. As you can see it's about nine inches so at this part usually what I do is I take a bobby pin or a safety pin in this instance um, I use a bobby pin I just kind of find it a little bit easier to use um, not as bulky as the head of a um, safety pin I cut two pieces to the size that I need um, this um, elastic that I'm using is the ones that they use for the hospital mask um, I asked for this specifically at um, the fabric store I take my bobby pin and I feed a I feed the elastic through I pull through just enough to feed it through the end of the mask now this part here is optional um sometimes um i sew too close so i need to feed something in through the hole to help get my bobby pin through um so i took a piece of a bamboo skewer um, that I barbecue with um, just be careful with these because um, they have sticky ends um, usually I cut the tip off of it but um, as you can see I took the bamboo skewer and I fed it through the top part of the mask first where the pleats were this is how it would look once you feed your bobby pin into the bottom part where it's less bulky to help push it up with the bamboo skewer but don't don't use the pointy end the pointy end should be up to the top if you do i highly advise cutting that off because i've stuck myself before trying so i'm just giving you a hands a heads up so i feed my bobby pin through the bottom and i follow along with the bamboo skewer once you follow along, you should have something that looks like this once you feed it through the top. 
So for this part, I want to show you that I double knot. I put it in a double knot um, so that when I do um, put it through the inside, that it will and I it it will be less likely to come out of the knot. This is how it looks once I um, tighten the knot. As you can see here, I'm feeding one of the ends of the, um, not feeding, I'm just pulling it through to make sure that the knot will be in the middle of the inside of this and you won't feel it. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this. So you won't be able to see the um, knot, it'll be on the inside. And another thing with the knot is, um, if it's too big, you can take that knot out and re retie it to um, make it more snug on your face. Um, also, the, the other reason why I like having an opening like this is that um, ever at one point it snaps, I can uh, feed through another piece of elastic um, and I don't like sewing it down. Some people like sew sewing theirs down. I just me personally, I don't like sewing mine down only because I may want to just change out that piece altogether. Again, I just want to show you how I um put the bamboo skewer through the top where the pleats are, bring it through the bottom. Um, I take my bobby pin, follow it along with the bamboo skewer from the bottom to the top. You should have something that looks like this as you're following along. And again, like this as you're following along. Double knot, feed it through to make the knot in the inside of the, in the middle. Once you're done, it should look something like this. This is the other side, just to give you an idea. As you can tell, you see how the material looks on the other side. I love the way it feels against my face. I just can't stop talking about that. To adjust the mask, I pull at the top and at the bottom. So um, I don't put the wire in the middle, only because the way that I make it, I don't have to. I just pull at the top and at the bottom to adjust it to my face. This is a picture of how it looks at the bottom. As you can tell, um, I did mess my stitches up on the side, but it's it's not really noticeable. Um, the pattern um, where I cut it, I like the way it looks at the bottom. It um, it shows the emblem for the Louisville Cardinal. This is showing you how it looks at the top once I pull um, the top of the mask and the bottom of the mask. And as you can see, it's covering uh, most of my face. This is a view from the side. As you can tell, you can barely see where I messed up the stitch at. Um, that piece of string on there is just because I had just got through sewing, so it, I knocked it off. Another side view um, so that you can see. Um, the other side view, I think this is a better angle where you see the stitch, you can barely tell, and you see how it fits at the bottom and along with the top. And it, as you can tell, it's not really tugging at my ears. So I hope you've liked this tutorial. Um, you can share it with your friends and family if you want to. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, for right now, this is the only type of mask I'm, I make. I, I, I have made the other one with the pointy top towards the nose. But um, I, I prefer this one because it, like I said, I can adjust it at the top and at the bottom to cover my face completely. Um, so let me know what you think. Thanks.